College Basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Chase Freedom Unlimited. How do you cash back? And by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. And let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Mocs and the Paladins, presented by Chase Freedom Unlimited. Dean, something that jumps out to you on each side is the amount of collegiate experience in both starting five. There is, but it's done in a different way, right? For the for the Mocs, they've had success through the transfer process. They have eight transfers in total, seven coming from Division I programs. You know, for the Furman Paladins, they've really done it from within. Now, you see Conley Garrison, he was terrific in Division II Drury in Missouri. But other than that, this is a homegrown team. Oh, it's interesting, Bob Ritchie, the Furman head coach, noting from his perspective, the game within the game is that Furman wants to play fast. They want each team to have about 68 possessions. Chattanooga, he thinks, will want to play a half-court game, limit the possessions, and also do a good job on the offensive glass. But when they don't, and when they go up around 70 possessions, they're 0-4 this season on the box, but they win the opening tip. And there's Malachi Smith at a Belleville, Illinois, just outside of St. Louis, and we're underway here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Both teams like to play half court. We'll see a little bit of zone each way. We'll probably see 90% of zone half court between both. De Sosa at 6'9 can step out. At least he likes to. Just his third made three of the season, though. And the first points in the game. Now you mentioned just the third out of 13 attempts on the season. But when his feet are set, he's got a good look and release and has the freedom to shoot it. What an impressive facility it is. Banks tried to feed Conley Garrison for the Paladins. Going to push the pace. What Furman wants to do. Bothwell, three in transition. And Jalen Slauson flying in for the first points in the game for the Paladins out of Greenville, South Carolina. De Sosa, low post. Three Paladins around him, and a foul is called. Be the first in the game. They're going to say De Sosa on the way up. Let's give you our keys to the game, Dean. Well, pretty quickly, right? Furman, all points bulletin on Malachi Smith. You got to find him, you got to corral him, maybe even trap him and get the ball out of his hands. They also, they look, as experienced as they are, they need some help and productivity off the bench. For the Mox, don't change a thing. You lost on Wednesday, you're playing good basketball. Hey, the three, you've got to defend. What gives behind the arc? Uh, Furman's the best shooting team behind the arc. The Mock's the best defensive team guarding the three in this, the Southern Conference. Initial indication was that Sosa was fouled in the process of shooting. They changed it, but there he is cleaning up. And the big fella with five quick points to pace Chattanooga in the early going. Interesting matchups here today. You watch this last one, the drive, the pull up, and then DeSosa just, boy, he corrals that with his left hand, and he's big and he's long. He knows what to do with it inside. He's a guy that can cause a lot of problems in this league with his size and his athleticism. Garrison is a shooter behind the arc. 82% of his shots behind there. De Sosa, you saw the double team. He works right through it. And back in front go the Mox. It's been all De Sosa on the offensive end so far for Chattanooga. I think Darius Banks is really the glue guy for this Mox team, but De Sosa's the X factor, right? We're seeing it here early in the first four minutes. Alex Hunter. Does that at an impressive rate. Came into the weekend tied for the national lead in three pointers. Made and he knocks down his first tray of the game. Big side story in this game David Jean Baptiste. There he is facing the camera. The active leading scorer in the Southern Conference. Better than 1,500 points a game, but missing a second straight contest for undisclosed reasons for this Chattanooga team. Yeah, that's a big hit, right? He was second team last year, all Southern Conference by the coaches and the media. Fifth in career points for the Mox, over 1,500 career points you talk about. Think about this he's been in Chattanooga for six years. That's longer than eight of the ten head coaches. <laughs> a grizzled veteran, and yet he's not the oldest on their team. We'll no, talk more no. about that later. Smith got caught in the air. Gets it back. It's been all day Sosa so far, but he's getting a breather. Just into the ball game. Josh Ayeni, the oldest player on their team. He's approaching 26. Doesn't go well for him on his first touch. Paladins try to build on their first lead of the afternoon. Here's Hunter. That's where Alex Hunter is at his best. In transition, he can get the ball to the circle, meaning the middle of the court, make decisions. And boy, he's been a model of consistency. This is his 
first game in a Paladin uniform. He just knows what to do with it when he's got the basketball. Hoping to accomplish a couple of things this season. Long term, bring a SOCON title back to Chattanooga. Short term, get his first win, and this is eighth meeting against the Furman team. That went off his guard, Smith, and will go back over to Furman. This is a proud program. Yeah, you go all the way back to what Murray Arnold and Mac McCarthy and everyone did here in, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, when he came on board, he was the third coach in four years. Right? Will Wade was here, Matt McCall for just two seasons, and so it's taken him a while. And boy, he has built this program back, and they are now at the top of the SOCOM. Garrett Heen just into the game. Likewise for Joe Anderson for Furman. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Hunter. Bothwell on the wing. Now we're under 10 on the shot clock. Driving and kicking. And from the corner, Tyrese Huey just checked in. And a good start for him. Drains the tray. Paladins build the lead out to half dozen. The other part of why January has been a uh, most eventful month for him and his lovely wife, Jessica. A week ago Wednesday, they delivered their third child as Heen. At the line this season, 54% knocks off the first. Well, their third child, Jax, and their first child in 10 years. They have an older daughter and an older son, age 12 and 10. And there's Bob early on in the morning, uh, Wednesday a week ago, with Jax, 8 pounds, 13 ounces, born at 3.25 a.m. That night at 7 p.m., Bob was up in Greensboro, about a three-hour drive from Greenville, South Carolina, guiding his team to a four-point win over the Spartans of UNCG. I can appreciate that timeline. I can also appreciate and respect his wife for allowing him to leave like that. Only a coach's wife. Grant Ledford gets the lid off for the Mox. They've gone scoreless for a pretty good stretch, and they're back within four. He's happy with the defense that he plays. Ledford, one of those guys, a reserve from Knoxville, but a good touch from afar. You no, know, he certainly is, and that's what he can do. Square the feet, get that ball above the shoulders before the defense gets there, then it's a matter of whether you make or miss. Interesting, though. Think about this. We've played now seven, oh, seven minutes and 11 seconds. Malachi Smith still not on the scoreboard yet. Not much of a factor in this game. Driving on Avery Diggs. Diggs might have gotten a hand on it. There's Smith. Smith is always around the ball on both ends of the floor. A high IQ guy. Knows how to get to the free throw line as well. Oh! A couple of shakes and a spin for his first bucket of the game. In this program now for a few seasons. Very reliable. Smith again dumping to Diggs. That time it was knocked away by Foster. But Diggs able to clean up. Really known as a rebounder. Graduate transfer from Central Florida. He's under 30% now, and I know he wants to try to try to take those to keep the defense honest. And another delivery from afar by Grant Ledford. And just like that, we're tied back up at 17. That's the great equalizer, the three. Lefty really knows how to get to the free throw line as well. There's a step in by Foster. And a general finish. Foster good defensively as well. 17 still here, just like that. A 4-0 run for Furman. Slauson's got the size advantage on Caldwell. Foster inside on Ledford, who got a hand on it. Bothwell, though, there to grab it and finish. I don't think there's any question. As good as Hunter and Slauson are, Bothwell is like the heart and soul of this team. He's a guy that sometimes they, they go as he goes. Shot clock under 10. Diggs. Boy. Rough start continues. They're just 7 of 18 from the field, 3 of 9 beyond the arc. Furman tries to extend a 6-0 run after we were tied at 17. And Garrison inside. He's got eight early points. Let's we'll see if Lamont Paris, knowing that the under 12 is yet to be taken, is compelled to call a timeout. No, we will continue on. A nifty move by Garrison there. That's just a veteran move, right? You know you're a shooter, so they're overplaying you. So what do you do when you're overplayed? You go back door. Now Caldwell. There's a kick. Ledford. Boy, Pagese got out there. Looked like in time, but Ledford off the bench. He's really the only one that's keeping him in this game. Three for four beyond the arc. Nine points so far for Knoxville's Grant Ledford. Back to a five-point Furman lead. He can get it off really quick. Bothwell right back to Slauson. 
give and go, they run that as well as anyone in the Southern Conference. Absolutely, and they read the, the, the potential trap coming by Avery Diggs perfectly. As he stepped out, Slauson cut opposite to the basket. Diggs skips it to Smith. And a foul will be called. And they will get Foster on that. Furman Paladins have led by as many as eight. They're up by seven here in Chattanooga. They outscored the Bucks 20 to six in points off turnovers. That's been a trend so far today. It has. That's really the difference right now. Furman does yet to have a turnover. The box with seven. The points off turnovers, seven to nothing. Mm. And an emphasis. The lane was his, and Tyree Zui throws it down. Five points off the bench. And he's just too big in there. There's no need to double team. Now the lob down low. Banks back in there with two fouls. Gives you an idea as to how important he is. Look at that move. KC Hankton. St. Louis transfer, originally from Charlotte. And he makes it a five-point game once more. And a really good one who had 13 a year ago against Chattanooga in the Furman win. Noah Gurley's now at Alabama. Turnover by Slauson. Other end, Banks. Bob Ritchie not happy with that. Well, we, we're just talking about how efficient Furman has been in the turnover category. That was their first. Chattanooga immediately turns it into points as well, Casey Hankton and Chattanooga trying to get a little closer in the opening half. It's a big deal. You got to have ball protection. Winning on the road in league play is tough. You got to protect it. You can't give up easy baskets like this. In this league, you know, people will say, man, it's pretty good this year. And they've said that for the last couple of years. It's been good for five or six years now. I mean, it's arguably the best, you know, a non power five, power six league. Think about the talent that's been in here, the teams. Slauson. Big fella loves the three. Told you he'd moved under 30% of the season, but that's something else. That the athletic 6 7, 210 junior from the low country of South Carolina brings to the table. Smith thought about giving it away. Caldwell out front. He's a 32% three-point shooter. Mox hit him at 36 as a team, and they're starting to heat up a little bit after a cold start. Yeah, Malachi Smith with a terrific move. He attracts so much attention. He knows where his teammates and his shooters are. Looks like the Mox have made an adjustment to take Furman out of rhythm a little bit offensively. For under a minute to go in the half, Hunter used the front of the rim to wiggle it home, and one of the most prolific three-point shooters in the land has another tray. He's got eight in the opening half. 11 games of 20 points or more. Five seconds to go in the half. De Sosa. Emphasis as we arrive at the break. Slauson hit the deck. No whistle. And that's how our first half concludes here at the Roundhouse in Chattanooga. Good first half for that guy. De Sosa, 11 points over the first 20 minutes. Five of six. And again, Something to give the Paladins to think about heading into the halftime locker room. They took the ball. They trapped Malachi Smith. He knows what to do with it. Then the extra pass to the big fella. To your point, he knows what to do with it. Creates a little excitement, a little momentum as we head to halftime. The Mox now within five. Furman Paladins are 9-1 and one this season when they lead at the half. The Chattanooga Mox have been a good team when having to come back in the second half. They're 4-1. and one. Alex Hunter and the Paladins trying to get a win on the road. They look good in the first half, led by as many as eight. They're up by five at the break. Welcome back to College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Chase Freedom Unlimited. And here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the Furman Paladins, a five-point advantage on the mocks of Chattanooga. This is a very big game in the Southern Conference. First of two meetings in the regular season between these squads. And with Dean Keener, Pete Anity back with you. As that first half wore on, we talked, Dean, about points off turnovers. Now, that was a big advantage for Furman. But what else did you see as the mocks eventually cut into what was an eight-point deficit? Well, you're right. Points off turnovers, that was a key. But also, I thought Furman's defense was really solid in the first half. In particular, they corralled and bottled up Malachi Smith, limiting him just to four points. 
Now, the mocks were living around 30% from the field as the first half wore on, but they got a huge boost off the bench. One of their reserve guards, Grant Ledford, at 6'5", can shoot over defense as he did just that. Big opening half for him from three-point range. Yeah, they, he certainly was really big for them, especially in the early part of the half. Hey, he only had 16 points in his last seven games. And boy, he came up big with three big threes that kept him going, and while the Sosa was sitting out just a little bit as well. For Furman, right, those big three we talked about at the top, they came through again, 22 points between the three of them, Alex Hunter, Jalen Slauson, and Mike Bothwell. They all did their job at the offensive and defensive end, and that's a big reason why the Palanders are up five. 22 of the 38 points for Furman in the opening half by the big three that we featured here this afternoon. Will they be the difference in half number two, or will the Mocs be able to protect the home court and snap an eight-game losing streak in the series against the Furman Paladins? That's a big question, right? Think about this. As good as this program has been Chattanooga, right? they've lost seven, they've lost eight in a row to this Paladin team. Furman's a team that has been a model of consistency now for four or five years. They just haven't been able to break through the NCAA tournament, and unfortunately, sometimes that's how you're gauged at this level. You and I actually did the game at Timmins Arena in Greenville back in January of 2016 when Bob Ritchie at the time was an assistant on the Furman bench to Nico Medford when Furman began that winning streak, and they look to extend it today. A year ago, due to the whole pandemic, just one meeting between these two, and Furman won here in December of 2020 by four. They start the second half up by five and quickly go down low and Slauson on the feed from Bothwell. That's excellent coaching. That was clearly a set play out of halftime. Put the ball in Bothwell's hands, let him make some decisions. He found Slauson who had carved out some space inside. A tray by Smith gave him seven points so far. Came in averaging over 21. De Sosa had the big first half rejected down low by Slauson. Well, the problem is they threw the ball to where he only he could catch it, which is good, but he brought it down to his waist, made himself guard-like. Alex Hunter showed his ability from three-point range in the opening half, and he can hit him from two as well. But taken care of business since. Banks gets it out to De Sosa. Smith, Garrison tried to defend. So hard to do when you've got to confront Malachi Smith. And Smith going for the steal, double team near midcourt. Held ball, arrow to the Mocs. And this crowd just waiting to get off their feet. Malachi Smith, he, boy, he's the head of this team. He starts off with the three, and then he comes back with the drive, which he's so good at, good balance. Body control, he's starting to heat up five quick points. That's more than he had in all the first 20 minutes. Slauson scrappy, but now able to save it. Hankton for the mocks. Chattanooga can get as close as they've been in a while. He does the things that sometimes show up in the box score, sometimes they don't. Just a guy that does a little bit of everything. Swiss Army knife kind of guy. Mox having led since 16-23 in the opening half until now. He's the best shooter on this team. As good as Malachi Smith is, A.J. Caldwell is the best shooter on this team. A career 40% three-point shooter. He knows how to knock it down when he's open. A.J. Caldwell puts Chattanooga in front. Mocks up by two, and you're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Chase Freedom Unlimited. Ledford backing in on Pegues. Huh. Off of one foot. Nice drive there by Malachi Smith to get to the line, but that previous possession, Ledford just backing down the Furman defender, and then just a nifty little, almost Dirk Nowitzki fadeaway. He is showing the whole package, right? He knocks down three threes in the first half, but here in the second half, the defense taking that away. Now he's going to the rim, and he's got a little fadeaway. A smile right there. <laughs> he knows he's playing well. Alex Hunter called for the foul, and Smith knocks down the free throw. Slauson, boy, another deep possession, but he's able to 
One hand, throw it down with De Sosa traveling with him. And with all the film on Slauson, I, I just, it amazes me how people want to close out on him so, so fast and so close. Take a step back. Hey, you can live with some threes. He's not going to make enough to beat you. That ended an 11-0 Chattanooga run. There's a lob for De Sosa. Couldn't find the handle. Scrapping. And eventually Foster is pushing it over to his teammate. So we saw Slauson get the bucket near the zero mark on the shot clock. But again, what does Furman have to get back to, Dean? Well, they, they play around Slauson. They have to continue to play around that, but you got to defend him the right way as well. Look for those back door cuts. Look for opportunities off of steals. But you see right there, if you get a little more of that, you've got a chance to get this thing back to a marginal number. Good game here in Chattanooga. Yeah, hey, look, part of that has to do with just the elevation of defense by the Mox. Taking away back cuts, keeping things in front of them. Hunter. Offensive rebound. That's big for the Paladins. Unable to finish inside, though, Foster. They reset once again, Alex Hunter. He's not shy to shoot. And he knocks down another trade. Hang near the top of the nation in three-pointers made. Bothwell backing in on Smith. What a matchup that is for guards in this league. Little fadeaway and Mike Bothwell. Neither team choosing to double down, right? Regardless of whether it's a guard or a big posting up. Coaches will usually have something with a low shot clock number. So let's see what Lamont Paris can dial up to get the ball in the hands of the right guy. And defensively for that reason, you saw the signal from Bob Ritchie. Oh, what a nice move by Ianni. Not necessarily known for his scoring. 3.7 a game on the season when this contest began. But a big bucket down low and back out to a four-point advantage. That was a textbook up and under. Slauson trying to break down the big fella. Gets the roll and one. And that's where guys got to step up. Right? At one end, six on the shot clock. Ine up, under, and reaches to the rim. And then at the other end, Slauson Right, he's going to give it back to him in a different way, a drive, and that's where he's capable, and that's where you got it. You can't close out on him to the you got to be able to contest the shot, but you can't get too close to Slauson because he can drive really, really well against most bigs in this league. Slauson had 16 against Chattanooga last season. That was part of his growth during a campaign in which he got up close to 10 points a contest. One of the most improved players in the Southern Conference. And he now has 12 points in this game. No question. Just 19 points as a freshman. Defending in the paint. It kicks out on the wing. Banks can't get it to fall. Fighting for the rebound. Hankton and the save. Here's Caldwell. Once again. That's why they call him their Swiss Army knife. Darius Banks, another rebound. Here's Hankton from the corner. Looks like Keen got a hand on it. No problem at all for KC Hankton. Just 24% by the arc. Certainly grew up around the game. Oh, look at the pretty pass. And Hankton happy to oblige. As we stand, timeout on the court. Four-point advantage for the Mocs of Chattanooga. They're trying to get another SoCon win. And they're first in a long time against Furman. Paladin, so hanging tough on the road. You're a hoop head, right? You just love this time of year after that Monday night college football championship. All the attention turns to hoops. Boy, what a great spin move. And then the presence of mind and body control for the Malachi Smith pump fake to get the hoop. That's a great comment by you, right? Just the presence of mind, the IQ that Malachi Smith possesses. And now we see the Mox go to a little 1 3 1 half court pressure, change things up out of the timeout. Lamont Paris telling us before the game that's new this year. He hadn't done it. Came from the Wisconsin program, and that was obviously Big Ten, a lot of man to man. But it's a wrinkle they've thrown because they've got the bigs, and a blocking foul called on Ianni as he hit the deck. Slauson, shot clock at four, thought about a three, goes over top of De Sosa. That is not easy. What an afternoon it continues to be for Slauson. 18 in the contest, back to a one point game. Bothwell, strong move inside over De Sosa. Third best shot blocker in the conference on the last two possessions. First loss and now Bothwell have challenged him successfully. Well, if it's your first time watching Furman, 
for that matter, Southern Conference basketball, it is a high-level Bothwell. No, no wonder he was chosen all Southern Conference preseason. Paladins move back in front for the first time since earlier in the second half. Offensive rebound, De Sosa. Looked like Slauson got a hand on it, and Hunter runs it down. Boy, they're letting them play inside right now. Let the players make and determine the outcome of the game. Here they go again, playing around Slauson. Paladins looking to build on a one-point advantage off the pass fake. Bothwell can't get the jumper. And a really good long rebound that time by De Sosa. And now De Sosa kind of laboring a little bit up the court. You talked about it. He's not a 40-minute-a-game guy right now. Pretty nice move by Darius Banks. Little hesitation. And back in front go the Mox. So back and forth we go with a timeout on the court here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Lead changes abound here in Chattanooga. Bothwell leading his crew. But at the other end, right, Banks says, I got to give us the lead. Mox by one. Approaching two minutes in a three-point game. Banks strong inside on Foster. Head ahead of the line and try to tie things back up. Again, he's a guy who scored 1,000 points in three years at JMU, and he doesn't really care about the points. He's just about winning right now. That shows his maturity. What a nice drive. Good strength. He's able to take the bump by Foster, get the ball up off the glass, completes the three-point play, tie game. Three fouls now on Foster. So here we are, even up at 67 apiece. Banks. And a scrappy rebound by Caldwell. By Iene kept that alive, and then Caldwell ran along the baseline. Not sure Smith will give it up this time. Smith inside on Buffwell. Wow. Malachi Smith, a guy over 80% on the season, the guy you want at the line. He makes the first. Well, he puts him in front. What if he misses the second? If you're Furman, do you use that final timeout and reset? Well, I, I think you at least get it to half court before you use that final timeout. But I think if you're Bob Rich, you're talking about, hey, don't make sure that you don't give up an offensive rebound. And then make sure that if you do see a little bit of 1-3-1, that's a possibility, that you know what you're going to do. You don't want to get caught, you know, just not knowing how to react to a change in defense. Been a lot of heroes on both sides, but none bigger than Malachi Smith. He does just that. Two-point game. Bothwell. Five seconds to go. Bothwell. Foster. Can't get it to fall. Smith came over to defend. And that'll do it. Malachi Smith gave him the lead. And he gets the key stop at the end. And the Chattanooga Mocs not only get a victory at home, but they snap an eight-game skid in the series against the Furman Paladins. What do you say? This game had everything that you wanted. High-level play. You feel for Marcus Foster. The defense there just at the last moment caused a little bit of reaction. Put it up too hard off the glass. You just, boy, your heart feels for Bob Ritchie and the Furman Paladin. Watch this again. Bothwell, he's driving, and then Foster just, things just open up. And here comes Malachi Smith. He wasn't going to foul. But Foster, rather than dunk it, just thinks he's going to lay it in, and he puts it too hard off the glass. Boy, he'll have to live with that on the ride home, unfortunately, to Greenville, South Carolina. Malachi Smith picked the right time for just the fourth block in his Chattanooga career. Granted, he's only been here a couple of years. Now, keep in mind, in the Southern Conference, the schedule's off balance. There have been some postponements, but with the victory, the Mocs remain one of the one-loss teams. Furman falls a game back in the loss column of Chattanooga. Well, we, we expected and we saw everything today. I mean, just an, a high-level basketball game. A, a, somebody had to win, somebody had to lose. Malachi Smith, along with others, really pulled and willed the Mox to a victory here inside the, the roundhouse. Malachi Smith is the hero with his scoring 21 points and with the big defensive play. 71 to 69 is the final score for Dean Keener and our entire crew, Pete Kennedy, saying so long. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.